Hi, today we'll talk about resumes, LinkedIn profiles, and the hiring processes for software engineers and QA. Um, we'll cover the most common mistakes uh, during the interview, and we'll get a couple of tips for salary negotiations. Um, I'm happy to have a guest, Adil Mansour. He's an engineering manager at the company Chow Now. And uh, we previously hosted mock interviews together to help engineers with uh, interview skills. Uh, enjoy today's session and welcome Adil. Adil, uh, very interesting. Please uh, tell a little bit about your experience. What do you do now? W where you are at? And a uh, little, bit, little bit more about your current p position. Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm at Chow now right now. Been here for a, almost a couple of years. Um, so I lead the um, the quality engineering work, includes QA engineers, SDETs. Um, before before Chow Now, I was at an entertainment payroll and accounting firm, Entertainment Partners, for almost a, almost a decade. Um, and uh, before that, I was a QA engineer for Yahoo Search Advertising. Mm -hmm. And what's your role at Chow Now? A a my role at Chow Now is engineering manager. Mm -hmm. um, awesome, awesome, and. Uh, what did you do at, at Entertainment Partners before? Uh, what I did in Entertainment Partners, uh, obviously was there for almost 10 years, so did a lot of different things. But uh, before before I left, I was a, uh, I was a director um, on helping out with uh, QA, engineering, um, whatever is whatever's needed to uh, keep the ball rolling. Got it, got it. So primarily you've been in... Um, managerial position uh, with Chauno and entertainment partners. Is this right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's fair to say like been been in management position for the last seven years. So been managing for the last seven years. Um, was a lead, senior QA, QA engineer before that. Awesome, awesome. Could you please tell a little bit more about Chow now? Mm -hmm. what, this, uh, what these guys do? What is their main product? And uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, um, at Chow Now, uh, you know, our mission at Chow Now is helping local restaurants thrive. So everything we do is connected to restaurants. We're an online ordering platform uh, for the restaurants. Um, we we try not to just stop there. Uh, continue going. There's there's marketing. There's mobile apps. There's web apps. There's integrations. Um, you know, there's there's all also third party integrations. There's payment processing. Uh, there's some things that that people can see, there are things that people can't see. So, um, you know, we're in the, um, you know, we're in the B2B, B2, B2, and B2C phase. Uh, obviously, we want to have restaurants on our platform, but um, we also want it to be the best in class experience for diners to connect with those restaurants. How big is your engineering uh, team? Okay. Um, it's, it's changed. It's grown so much in the past. Uh, couple of years uh, I lose track but um, in I think we're close to a hundred people what we what we internally um, refer to as our product you know uh, team our, our makers team we that includes product managers engineer uh, product engineering and design uh, we're up to 100 people uh, and okay. you know all the other disciplines required to you know ship software awesome how about uh, QA uh, department? Yeah, QA department has has grown a lot as well. Uh, right now, the head headcount stands at uh, like 20, 23, 24, and we're just continuing to hire, so <laughs> the number keeps going up and up. All right, I see. Um, how was the? Uh, how did you guys do during the pandemic? Uh, during the COVID, did you hire people or? You yeah, are, we we hired a ton hard. of we hired a ton of people. Um, obviously, with with the pandemic, uh, you know, people on you know, what we offered became really important to restaurants and diners because people could could no longer go in and you know eat out. Um, so there was a, a big shift uh, immediately. There was, you know, I, the way I like to describe it is. You know, when I first joined Chow Now, I would ask, like, what's our busiest day? Like, oh, Super Bowl. So every day became Super Bowl, uh, essentially. But um, so, you know, it became really important to, to stay true to, our, true to our mission and continue to help restaurants, like, stay in business. So um, so obviously, uh, the business side of things were, were really growing fast. So 
um, we were hiring we were hiring a ton last year and we continue to hire this year and um, to continue to meet um, you know our customer demands and and you know get into additional market segments awesome awesome so can you tell a little bit about the hiring process at chow now how it looks like especially for position like uh, QA or developers yeah most most in, I mean all of the engineering positions um, are are pretty similar um, so the process let me let me think this over um, you know so so people are applying in obviously uh, I remember when I posted my first QA position uh, I, I don't know I got like a thousand <laughs> resumes in within a couple of weeks um, so so there's there's that um, you know you're, you're applying in and and then uh, resumes are getting reviewed um, and and then recruiters reaching out to uh, you know the people who are uh, you know who, who match well to the to the to the job description and uh, uh, you know there's a recruiter screen manager screen and uh, usually some sort of assignment associated with engineering positions and a final set of interviews that's that's the process um, from a candidate pr perspective like that's the process but mm -hmm. we put in a lot of work up front as well before we can post positions we have to obviously uh, spend time creating those job descriptions that are really relevant to the position um, and then uh, as the hiring manager, you're putting together uh, all of the questions up front. So we try not to ask random questions in interviews. So uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of work that goes in before you you can you know that I can even post a position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you're getting dozens uh, thousands of resumes, right? Um, can you tell a little bit more about this process? Uh, I assume that. Those resumes should be uh, screened before by your recruiters or like uh, HR department, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so every position has a technical recruiter at, for engineering. Uh, so uh, they're helping uh, screen resumes. There's an ongoing conversation between the hiring manager and the technical recruiter. Um, I have access to to look in, to look at those resumes as well. So uh, I might go in and, and look at those resumes and flag them as well. So um, it's a partnership between the hiring manager and, and the technical recruiter. But yeah, typically the technical recruiter is uh, screening resumes um, ahead of time. Got it. Got it. So recruiters do their part. They um, they they filtering uh, some type of resumes, right? And then it goes to your table. Um, so can you tell in terms of resume, how the good resume should look like? Yeah, um, I think number, I, I think when, with with resumes in general, right? So just the industry is so big in engineering, whether it's QA, backend, frontend, mobile, right? Um, would would like to say like there is no one answer, but mm -hmm. uh, I'll share some of the things that, that I look for. Um, I guess number one is this isn't <laughs> this isn't super important, uh, I would say, but the length is like controversial sometimes. Um, I think resumes typically should be between one and two pages long, but mm -hmm. um, it's uh, I think some people want are okay with longer. But I think you tell me Evgeny, what what have you seen in in your in your experience? But I think one between one to four is like the range across the industry shouldn't be any more than four pages. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I am on the same page. Uh, I would say I like, uh, I, I would say that that way. I'll put it this way. Personally, I like uh, one, two pages, not more than like one and a half. So it should be very easy to read. But uh, the requirements from the hiring managers that I worked with previously they didn't put hard requirements, but most of them they did really like long pay, uh, uh, long resumes, like more than three, four pages. It's overkill. Um, but again, it I think it's a preference from each uh, hiring manager. But I would say in the the most of them they would prefer also uh, to one, two to three pages, not not longer. I totally agree. Yeah, and I think it 
it starts to tie into how much time we spent looking at resumes as recruiters, as uh, hiring managers. Typically, we're not spending a lot of time looking at these resumes. So the goal is, with the length and everything else, is to make it really easy for people to pick up on uh, what's really important in your resume uh, so they can quickly make a determination. Yes, uh, let's, you know, let's move forward with this person. Let's reach out. Let's set up a call. Um, I think that that is the important part with with the length. Uh, certainly anything more than that, you're, you're reading a lot, you're getting lost. Uh, you, you may want to just move on to the to the next resume. Yeah, but there's I, no hard requirements. Yeah, for sure. That's, that, that's true. I also, you know, I I read about the resumes from the uh, uh, from the psychology uh, perspective. Um, so usually you have like not more than six seconds to understand if you want to read it, this resume or not. So it's like, you know, it sh the resume should be, looks like a pitch, right? Um, so you, you do introduction within six seconds, you should be understand, okay, I want to read it more and I want to get the detail. But if within these six seconds you, did, you, you understand that, no, uh, I'll just keep it. You didn't see, I think what, what I'm looking in, in the resume is um, the experience, right? Relevant experience, obviously. Um, I'm looking for specific requirements um, and I'm looking into the, uh, what did he do at the last two uh, jobs? If it's like less than, less than two years each, right? But uh, if the last job was 10 years, obviously uh, this is what I'm gonna look at and what kind of experience. How about you, Adil? Yeah, I, th I think that is very true. I mean, I'm experience, the, the relevant requirements. I think that the relevant requirements is a really important point, which I'm not sure if enough people really understand it because I've, I've spoken to people about their resumes and this is probably the part they have the hardest time understanding. But basically, the idea is that the job description is is a cheat sheet. You know, uh, the 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 hiring the, the company that's hiring the hiring manager the recruiter they're telling you what they're looking for. Uh, so if you treat that as a cheat sheet and then you look at your resume and you see, um, you know, you see that if you see opportunities to highlight things like a lot of people, I feel like maybe look at job descriptions. You're like, oh, I can do that. Oh, I want to do that, right? And that's great. Yeah. And you you want to have that feeling, but also look at it and be like, okay, but does my resume tell this this story uh, that this cheat sheet is looking for? And if it doesn't, uh, just update to highlight those things. Uh, just to give you an example, would be um, let's say something like, oh, let's say I'm applying for a position that uh, is mobile based, right? So they talk about uh, HTTP uh, proxy tools, right? Mm -hmm. And Maybe it's just a single word on my resume, like under skills, it says, um, you know, something like, uh, what's a popular HTTP proxy tool? I'm, I'm, uh, Charles? Char Charles Proxy, right? So it just says Charles Proxy. It doesn't give any, uh, it doesn't give any, any context, but I, because I, they chose to highlight it in their job description, I might choose to add it to my summary or add a line in my experience that talks about uh, something related to HTTP proxy. I'll give you an example. One of uh, one of one of our our managers, QA managers here at Chow Now, um, they had to do an investigation where they had to compare all these different ones and and uh, standardize using using one. We ended up choosing uh, just just proxy man for that. But as an example, like that's something that that person can can then highlight um, and present, even if it wasn't there. Um, so just treating you know treating the job description as a cheat sheet. Yeah, yeah, uh, 100% on board because I saw, and I think it's also like one of the biggest uh, and common mistakes, not the biggest, but the common mistakes people do. They make universal resume for all job descriptions, like mobile. So yeah, I, I know that it is hard to customize your resume for each job description, especially when uh, the candidate is uh, on active searching, right? So he's probably bombarding uh, with a lot of, uh, he's applying to a lot of companies. But obviously, if the company is looking for 
for example, web or web engineer, web or web QA engineer. So hiring manager probably want to see relevant to the web QA, right? Yeah. Um, and vice versa. If they are looking for a mobile QA engineer or a mobile engineer, they're looking into that. And sometimes even in the uh, mobile, there's a distinguish, distinguish, uh, they distinguish between iOS and uh, Android, right? Yeah. So basically what you're saying is if you guys are applying, read carefully the job description and don't assume that hiring manager will understand that you have the skills if you are not highlighted in the resume. I mean, it, it's, it is a, a, some sort of art, right? So you need to stand out and you need to give whatever hiring manager wants. Obviously, if you're able to provide it. Right. If you don't have the skills and you just put it, doesn't work either. Yeah, I think your second point is spot on. But let me just just uh, on the on the first point, definitely make their life easier. Make it easier for them to give you a call back um, by doing that. But the second point is super valid as well because there's I, I can't imagine a single manager or um, uh, yeah a single re- uh, hiring manager who whose pet pet peeve isn't people uh, are unable to speak to something that they have put in their resume. Um, so obviously if, if you don't know something, um, don't put it in there, but if you do know it, uh, find ways to highlight it. Um, and I think on that point, the other part is really important as well. Uh, just, you know, thinking about, uh, thinking about being inclusive and diversity, I will, I will say for women in tech, if, if you see you, you hit 80%, like that's, that's the kind of rule we think about. Um, if you see you hit 80% of the requirements. Go ahead and apply. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I mean, you know, and uh, there's so much research around this. Men tend to overestimate uh, in general, uh, overestimate <laughs> their capabilities, and women tend to uh, underestimate. Um, so just keep that keep that in mind. So we we at Chana, we we try to, and even at my previous employers, we try to put special care that we don't add a lot of fluff uh, that that you know dissuade, especially women in tech, from from applying to positions. So we try to be like really, um, you know, what is really required for this position? Let's like nice to have stuff like, like try avoid avoid even putting them in the job description for that reason, uh, because then you know, women tend to look at it be like, oh, I'm, I don't mean hundred uh, percent. Men tend to look at it and say like, hey, uh, you know what? I can do uh, it. <laughs> I can do it. Uh, you know, I've been a QA engineer for three years, and um, now I-, I can be a QA QA manager now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's so true. That's so true. I, I see that a lot. I see that a lot. But this is a great point, actually. You know, I think I think that you are care actually about what are you putting in the job description, and uh, you are trying not to scare away. Uh, uh, the possible candidates, right? That's I think I think this is great because I see a lot of uh, job descriptions uh, from the different um, uh, companies. It's you know uh, it, it's really tough. I mean it's really scary. Uh, even I know that a lot of experienced engineers they say, oh, uh, this job description looks like I don't know uh, the whole. The whole engineering department, uh, they, they are looking in one person, right? And um, that's another thing. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you are working on that deal. So let's talk about let's talk about the LinkedIn profile. Do you do you actually look into the LinkedIn profile before the uh, the interview or? or like when you're getting the uh, resume? Yeah, um, I think LinkedIn profiles, yeah, we not always, but if it's if it is available and um, well, let, let me let me let me work my way back a little bit. You know, some right right now, it is definitely a candidate's market out there, right? You know that I know that. Um, so so with that, uh, sometimes we're you know, you have to reach out to people that that are a good fit. A lot of times you're doing that 
based on their uh, LinkedIn profile. Or you have a referral from somebody like, hey, I worked with this person and they're really good. Uh, they're not actively looking. Hey, here's their LinkedIn profile. What do you think? You know, um, and 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 that point, the, the technical recruiter or my, or or hiring manager might reach out to them uh, directly through through LinkedIn. So I think LinkedIn can be a really really important tool. Again, it's not something that's that's necessary. Uh, a lot of people get you know get jobs every day uh, in in engineering uh, without having a LinkedIn profile. But I think it just it's 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 a little it's very little effort. Uh, to to get something out there, and then perhaps even further down the line, when their panel interviews, it can make it really easy for people to just uh, you know um, to to look at your experience at a, at a high level. So I think I think it's good to have. Uh, it's not necessary, but it's good to have. You know, I just talked to uh, just yesterday. I talked to my friend. He's a senior QA automation engineer. Right now, the market is super hot. Right. And uh, so he said that right now he's getting all requests just in the LinkedIn. He didn't post any resumes. He getting five to six interviews a day. He moved from Bay Area to um, to Irvine yeah. and uh, he's an active search. So he said that every day he has six scheduled interviews, not with the recruiters, with the hiring managers, you know. This is crazy, and uh, I think yeah. If you guys don't, uh, if you guys don't have LinkedIn, you should have it. If you have LinkedIn, what ideal do you think should be in there? Like, uh, if you look into the LinkedIn profile of the potential candidate, what I would say, what would be a, a good LinkedIn profile versus not good? Yeah, I mean, I would say mine isn't super great, <laughs> but. Um... But what helps is a couple of things, as and, and you can probably talk more about this, but as, as you're looking through them, uh, especially in the sort of recruiter view, um, what you see is, um, I, I forget what's ex exactly called in, in LinkedIn, like your like a small, small description next to your name. I don't know if they call it title or what they, what they call it, but the exact name. But usually you can just only see that. So, you know, leaving that sometimes by default, um, LinkedIn will make that as, you know, um, QA engineer at company X, right? Mm -hmm. They will just take your title and put it there. So maybe take advantage of that because I, I don't know if everybody knows that, but in recruiter view, the first thing you see is that little snippet that yeah. you have um, next to your name. Like so, a short description of yeah. your, yep. Yeah, so taking advantage of that is, uh, is important, I think. Um, and then moving on to like you have, you know, if you can put more information doesn't have to I, I've seen people like copy paste their resume in there and and that's fine too you can do that if you want but just s dropping like s small little hints about you know the kind of uh, kind of work you're doing kind of tech you're doing whether it's in your experience or this like longer description section of LinkedIn I think it's it's super helpful for uh for hiring managers and and recruiters to to exactly to find you know like the example you were giving to find somebody like that and reach out to them and you know really just uh, you know, streamline the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. How about the picture? Uh, picture is an picture is an interesting one, right? Because picture, obviously, um, I mean, just t whether the recruiter or hiring managers, there's so much. Um, uh, what's the right word? Uh, subconscious bias. Well, oh, subconscious subconscious, bi subconscious bias that uh -huh. plays into it, right? I know in other countries, like in Asia, uh, like putting pictures in your resume is like super super common. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and really you want to, especially, I, I mean, I think it should be true of any industry, but in, in engineering, we want to hire people regardless of how they, um, you know, uh, how they look, um, their, their race, their age, their, uh, you know, you name it, their gender, um, right. We don't want to have those biases. We want to really look at their resume. So it's sometimes a double, double edged sword. I would say, you know, have, you know, having a photo is generally better, uh, from an engagement perspective on a social media uh, even such as LinkedIn, uh, but the downside is I, I don't really like the, the picture side of the things. Um, anyway, but you know, put in something professional. Don't <laughs> you know? Uh, don't put something uh, unprofessional um, in there. Put something simple. Um, if you're uncomfortable putting your picture out there, I think that's okay too. Um, you know, 
do do what makes you comfortable. Uh, but but you know, usually at, at an engagement level, having having your picture there does help. Yeah, that's hundred percent true. I um, agree that if you're not comfortable, you shouldn't put your picture. Uh, there should be no shame about that. But if you put your picture there, it should be definitely a professional picture, not or like not. I would say it could be a business casual, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't don't have doesn't have to be in a suit and a tie or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Business casual is great. Uh, the other thing I think it's kind of cool is um, you know there's all these uh, and you may know them. There are all these freelance sites out there, right? So you can you can pay somebody like. 20, 40, 50 bucks to make a caricature, a uh, cartoon um, version of, of you. And, and you can use that and that could even serve as your logo. I know, you know, somebody in our in our industry who has a really good logo, like Angie Jones has a really good good logo. She uses uses that a lot of places in, instead of her um, mm-hmm. uh, her profile picture. So, you know, you can you can do something like that as well. That's true. Actually, you can pay uh, for like 20, 50 bucks. I mean, it depends. the The price could uh, different, but you can pay actually to make you uh, a LinkedIn profile, uh, or make it look better. Yeah. Uh, if you're not sure, like to to do some audit of your LinkedIn profile, and probably that's a good way to invest if you're not sure. Same thing with the resumes. I think um, writing the resume skill. It's it's. It's another skill, and yeah. to be honest, I wasn't great in the writing resumes by myself, um, and I'm using a lot of tools, uh, especially with a grammar and uh, syntax, which which is uh, catching those kind of errors, like of English grammar. Um, I'm talking about all the time about Grammarly. My this yeah. is my favorite tool, um, but for resume i would also invest and pay you can you can hire a person for 50 to 100 dollars and he can fix your resume and find you know uh, stuff that you probably cannot find right so yeah and and they're freelancers now you can you can hire freelancers directly through linkedin now which is which is really cool i i don't know the quality of it i haven't i haven't used that service uh but i would say one one small caveat and maybe you can add to that. Like I've seen people um, pay for resumes, but they get like this final polished version, but it mm-hmm. kind of ties back to our original point. You need to be able to edit to so make sure if you're getting a resume built by somebody else and if it's, no matter how fancy it is, you want to have like the, that source code uh, or whatever they're, you, you know, if they're using some sort of config to drive that, you want to have access to that because you want the ability to to tweak your resume. Oh yeah, definitely. You, uh, I, I mean, Nobody should take the res- the final version of resume and uh, you know without reading and without understanding. Definitely, uh, those freelancers who is making you a resume, they usually uh, make the resume based on what you provide to them, right? And even even though you should definitely uh, proofreading uh, the final version, and then able to add it to specific positions you know if you applying for as I, as i mentioned for a q engineer you cannot apply with the same uh, resume to even even within within qa there's different varieties of qa right so same thing here um all right Ajay, let's uh, let's move forward let's say um you got the resume you got the you you were able to check the uh, LinkedIn profile and then the person move forward and uh, go th- through the interview. Could you name most common mistakes that uh, you usually see during the interview? Why people got rejected? Um, it's a tough one, wide variety of uh, of reason. Some of the most commons, common ones that people can definitely address and make better. Um, I, I think number one is, you know, having things in your resume um, that you can't speak to. Um, I remember I reviewed a resume, I want to say like almost almost 10 years ago when I wasn't even a manager, I was in a panel interview and they had something interesting that popped out to me, right? Uh, they had something like, 
uh, they implemented abstract APIs or they tested, I forget it was a QA or a dev role. But um, when I asked them about it, they thought about it for a minute and then said, they don't remember it was a while ago, right? Uh, I still remember it 10 years later, right? So uh, just to tell you like how, how important that is, like if, if, you, if you say you know something, um, like know it. If Sometimes I look at like, you know, there are times, you know, I was at a company for 10 years, so my resume wasn't always updated. But sometimes if I go, would look, go look back at my resume, I didn't, rec I didn't remember some things. Like, I, I'll just drop it. Uh, I, would just, uh, I would just drop it. So I think that's one common mistake where people, um, you know, people will, will have something uh, on their resume or something in their experience that's implied and they can't speak to it. Uh, that, can be, that can definitely be a red flag. Um, what are the other most common, common things that people can, can get wrong? Uh, let's see here. Let, let, let's put it this way. Requirements yeah. is for uh, QA automation. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. let's make an example. Yeah, the requirement is for QA automation. The engineer, for example, he was doing uh, manual QA and some uh, and let's say some sort of QA automation, uh, but he put it in the resume that he was doing the QA automation, right? And during the interview, you discovered that. Well, actually, actually, he was not doing this all the time. So when do you think it's good to put something that you're really strong with and you are not really strong with? So there should be kind of line, right? Yeah, I think that's an excellent point. Um, what What is usually, like, if, if there's something... What, so we talked about job description being this cheat sheet, right? But the cheat yes. sheet doesn't tell you how things are weighed, right? It, it tells you this is requirement one, this is requirement two. It doesn't say like the requirement one is like 90% and requirement person is 10%. So uh, you really you really don't, uh, in some cases, you really don't understand. But I would say uh, if, if you have a lot of things like that, where or if you even have a few things where you have exposure, but you're not really uh, comfortable with, maybe... You know, maybe consider putting it in in a section where, um, you know, something you want to do in the future or something you want to do more of. Um, is, is is a recommendation I've seen before uh, from other hiring managers. I've never seen it in practice uh, on resumes, mm -hmm. ever. Um, so I think that's a that is a really tough one. When should you put it in? Right? If you think this is, I think it's it's the self awareness. If you think it's something important within your field, if you think a lot of jobs are looking for, it, invest in learning that thing. I would say uh, is more important. Um, there's so many different tools out there to to learn those things, and and you can put them as a, you know a side project or something else on your resume, and that will still resonate with a technical recruiter and hiring manager. Um, but I would say if if you if you're not comfortable talking about it, like people will put. Um, uh, like one of one of my um, one of my peers, uh, she posted a position where you know they're open to people with um, you know like automation and, and a more ma manual role, right? So there's a Python uh, component to it that they're requiring if you want to go for the automation role. Uh, if you put Python, know enough Python to uh, to back it up. Uh, yep. You know if you if you took somebody else's Python script and executed it, don't put it on your resume because that's mm -hmm. not gonna that's not gonna that's gonna send the wrong signal. And it's not gonna resonate. I, I would say like. If you don't know, if you did something and you don't really understand what you did, don't put it on your resume. That, that would be my, my rule of thumb. That's a great advice. That's a great advice. Really like it. All right, let's go back to the interview. So the person, let's say he's, uh, he passed the interview, he did a good thing. You are going to extend the offer. Do you have any tips for the negotiations you offer? What would be your advice here? Yeah, um, my advice would be, and, and this is the same advice anybody would give you in any sales position, uh, just ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. And, um, and if it's a company, like I've, I've, I've personally, I, I think maybe in my whole career, maybe heard of one position, but that was at a very, very high level, not, not a, like above a management position, like a senior director position, that, that, you know, that somebody's offer was, was rescinded. Because uh, because of their counter offer, like no company, most com I would say if you if you do that and somebody some company pulls the offer, uh, it's probably not a company that you want to work for, anyway. 
right? So it doesn't hurt to ask. Just ask, uh, work, work through your recruiter around what's, what makes sense uh, or not. Uh, also know for yourself, right? What is, as far as compensation, like what is important to you? Because usually there are two aspects of it. There's one aspect of it is, is visible to you, is how much you want to make, right? Be upfront about that. Uh, so you're likely to get, you know, you'll you'll be you you'll likely to get somewhere near that near that because you shared it early and the recruiter knew about it early and they've they they made sure that this was you know it was within the range of this position. The other part is the invisible part, right? You want to make sure you get the most money. You want to make sure you don't leave something on the table. That's harder to to deal with. Um, I think I, again, every comp- there's so many different companies out there doing the thing. I mean, at Chana, we really care about. Uh, equitable pay, where if somebody's doing the same job, we want to pay them the same money, uh, whether we're hiring them or whether they're, they're they've been with us for a long time. Regardless, we want to we want to have that we want to have that balance. Um, so so this is the invisible part that's that's harder to sometimes to deal with. But you know 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 the market, know what you want to make. Um, don't be afraid to to counter. I would say uh, would be in your in your benefit. Uh, the other thing, I think this is maybe more on the QA side, less on the engineering side. Like pe- sometimes folks are uh, not comfortable like applying to multiple multiple jobs at the same time, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can apply to multiple jobs at the same time and and compare the compare offers um, as well, and and that can give you uh, the comfortable and con- comfort and confidence to understand, you know, how much what's your what's the market rate and what is kind of your marketability. Uh, as well yeah it also depends on the i think it also depends on the season for example right now like the end of uh, summer and in the fall the market is very hot and um, salary range uh, getting more competitive it's getting higher actually and um, also i think definitely everybody should ask but even before the interview, when you talk, you are talking to uh, recruiter or to uh, HR from the company. You should ask what what is their range before actually even applying, because you know sometimes uh, the company they are offering not in your range and yeah. doesn't make sense to apply there, and vice versa. Actually, maybe uh, if you are I mean, applying still not uh, not hurting uh, anyway. But if you are uh, in the beginning of your career and you're trying to apply to, let's say, QA lead or lead engineer, obviously uh, you are not qualified. Probably, most likely, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can't say say about everybody, but most likely. So you need to think about it and when do you understand that this company is willing to pay in your range in your target uh, where you're going then yeah definitely you go there you pass the through the all processes and then after that when the company extended you an offer you actually sometimes usually usually uh, let's put it this uh, straight usually companies they offering lower end of the range uh, it depends, obviously, right? Uh, yeah. uh, but most likely, most likely, if they're saying like it, we are offering from one thirty-five to one fifty, uh, it's a very high possibility that you will getting the offer one thirty-five to one forty, right? Yeah. However, if you are like the top guy, like you're expecting all their expectations and you're exceeding the, all their expectations, they yeah. probably will offer you on the higher end. But it's usually not the case. Yeah, and I think what's really also um, really crucial with just, just salary negotiation, and this is just negotiation in general, um, just ask them what the range is. Mm-hmm. Ask them before giving you, I mean, if you have a very specific dollar amount, there's no, you know, just share that. But asking, it's it's fair to ask the other, uh, ask the company, what you know, what the range for that position is. Um, I don't know. 
I, I think this is not true of all states, but in the state of California, um, a company cannot ask how much you're currently making. So, so think about that as well. Don't think about just like, oh, let me just tell them what I'm making and let them beat it by 10%. Doesn't, doesn't have to be the case. Um, you know, again, I don't, the part of it is you may not understand what the market rate is, the, all the other aspects of it. So you can ask for, you know, what the, what the range is. If you have a dollar amount in mount, uh, dollar amount in mind, don't be shy. Uh, definitely share it, but uh, you're going to, you're going to understand it a lot more, a lot better if you ask for that company's range. And then definitely don't, I, again, this may not be true of other states. You tell me what's, uh, what, what's working, but in California, don't share what you're making. Share what you want to make. If, I like uh, you it. Know, when it when it comes to that. Awesome, I like it. So ideal. Uh, are you are you are you guys hiring at this moment? You mentioned. Yeah, uh, we're we're hiring. We're ac hiring uh, across the board across the company. We have a lot of open positions. Me personally, I have QA engineer positions open. I have SDET manager position open. I have performance engineer position opens. We have back end, front end, mobile product managers, technical project managers, designers. I can go on and on. Like there are so many open positions. Uh, we're definitely hiring. So definitely check out uh, our careers page at channel.com. Adil, why engineers should apply to Chow now? Yeah, uh, excellent question. I think, A, if you're looking for a mission-driven company, you're going to find that at Chow now. Our mission, help local restaurants thrive. If you, uh, if you care about small businesses, you care about uh, eating local, uh, you know, that's, that's what we're all about. Uh, second, I think, is definitely a sense of, a sense of community. Uh, giving back to the community, but also within the company, there's a sense of community. We're supporting each other uh, in, in helping, you know, reach whatever personal and, and com career goals we have. And, and then finally, uh, you know, you're, you're working with some of, some of the top engineers in the, in the, in the business. Uh, we have a, a lot of influx of talent. We have a lot of existing folks that are really good. We have, uh, we have a, we have a stack. If it excites you, um, you know, those are all, I think, really good reasons to come work at Chano. Awesome. Great guys, please uh, apply to our, uh, to channel career page. Uh, you can find the links in our description below. And uh, Adil, thank you very much for participating and sharing a lot of very useful thoughts and tips. And uh, I'll keep in touch with you in the future. We'll be happy to see you again. Sounds good. Glad to All be right. here. All right. All right. Bye. Thank you.